Hey everyone, welcome back for another video. My name is Tanya, for those of you that are new here, and I'm a watercolor and acrylic artist. So today's video is gonna be a watercolor yellow rose. So I hope you enjoy the video. Okay, so today I'm gonna to show you how to do a watercolor rose, and you can choose any color rose you want. I'm just gonna do yellow today. I've got my Princeton watercolor brushes. I've got a two, a four, and an eight. I'll let you know what size I'm using as I'm going along. I have my Winsor Newton watercolors. I just picked out a couple different oranges and uh, yellows and a couple greens and blues for the leaves. And I'll let you know what color I'm using as I'm going along there too. And I've got my paper towel and my water. All right, so to start this, oh, and I also have my Arches watercolor paper. Very important to have really good uh, watercolor paper. All right, so to get started, I'm gonna dip my brush, my size two, into, the, uh, into my water. And I'm gonna grab a little bit of my cad yellow I'm gonna get that all nice and wet in there. I'm gonna make a little puddle. Add some water, because I don't want it too, uh, too, too bright. All right, so then you can start anywhere you want. I'm just gonna do it right in the center of my page here. And I'm gonna start with a little spiral. And it's gonna be um, a tight, at first it's gonna be a tight little spiral. And it actually could be a broken up spiral. And what I mean by that is you can pick up the line and uh, put it back down, pick up the line and put it back down. So it's kind of like a broken up spiral. All right, so we did that with our size two. Then I'm gonna move to my size eight and I'm gonna get it wet. And I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna touch it in certain places with some water. And I'm just gonna try to kind of blend those little spirals together, leaving some white space still though, because you want some highlight in there. And then I'm gonna go around a little bit lighter on the edges here. You can add a little bit more yellow, depending on how big you want your rose to be. And then I'm just gonna take more water and I'm gonna go around it. I want the outside leaves to be a little bit lighter, so I'm not gonna put as much watercolor on them. And then you're gonna to do like a little C curve. So maybe like a little C curve this way and a little C curve this way. And you're gonna to wanna to leave white space in between some of these curves. So that'll be your highlight on the rose. Again, it just depends on how big you wanna make your rose. And you can add more water. You can close up some of those little C curves if you want to, you can join some of them. And then if you wanna close up a little bit more of that white space, you totally can. It's easier to add more paint than to take away paint with watercolor. So you always wanna start out light and you always wanna start out with not as much and you can always add more. All right, and I think that's a really good size for my, um, my rose. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna add a little bit of my pale red. It's cad red pale. And I'm just gonna add just little touches of it here and there more towards the center of the rose. I want the center of the rose to be deeper. So I'm gonna let it do its job and um, blend out naturally. And if you want to, if you don't like all these little veins here, what you can do is you can help it along a little bit and just push it. You just push it along a little bit and just show it which way you want it to go. Okay. We're gonna let that dry and we're gonna go on to our green. So I'm gonna pick up um, some of my sap green. I'm gonna make a little puddle on my palette here again. You want a good amount because you're gonna do some leaves and some stems and I think we'll even do a little bud. So get some good amount of water on there. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go in and get my, um, this is Windsor Green Blue and I'm gonna get a little puddle of that going as well because I like to mix these two colors together. All right, so if we go ahead and put in our stem right now, it will bleed into our rose a little bit because our rose is still wet. I'm gonna move to my size four. So if you don't want that rose to um, have a little bit of a bleed of the green, definitely wait till your rose is completely dry and, or you could blow dry it if you want to. I am just going to, it doesn't bother me at all when a little bit of that green goes into the rose. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna make a stem, just a delicate little stem. And then I'm gonna bring out a couple little leaves because roses usually have a little bit of leaves right around their little flower. And 
And it doesn't really matter how many you do. I'm gonna put a little bit of my Windsor Green Blue in there also. And even towards the tip of the stem here, where it connects to the actual flower, I'm gonna put a little bit of my Windsor Green Blue. And let's put a couple more little leaves going this way. Now I'm just alternating between my sap green and my Windsor green blue. You could even throw in here a little bit of blue if you want to. Um, let's see, I've got my Windsor blue green here. So I'm gonna throw in a little bit of that also if you wanna just give it a little bit of extra color. I, I feel like the more colors you have in a painting, um, the more whimsical, the more uh, interesting, and it actually pops off the page a little bit better. It doesn't um, feel as flat is when you just use one or two colors. It just doesn't feel as flat, but that's just me. You may like just using a couple colors and that's totally fine. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and do a little bud. I think I'm gonna do a little bud and I'm still using my size four. And the bud, you're just gonna come around with a little C curve going this way and a little C curve going that way. Make it as big as you want. And I'm gonna do kind of like a little straight line right in the middle also. So I've got pretty much three little lines, two C curves and a, and a straight, it's more like a triangle right in the middle. It just depends on how big you want your bud to be. And then you're gonna wanna just connect it to your stem. So I just did a nice big C curve connected to my stem. I'm gonna add a little bit of my green blue in there just to give it a little bit of interest. And I'm also gonna add a little bit of my blue green. I'm a really big fan of blues and greens mixed together. So um, that's, just, that's just me though. If, if you're not a fan of aquas and teals, you may not want to add a little blue in there, but I love doing that. Now I wanna also take away a little bit of the green here that is a little too dark on the ends of these little leaves. So I'm just gonna take a clean brush and sweep up with my brush, dab it off on my paper towel a couple times just to make the tips of those leaves a little bit lighter. I want it to be darker, more towards the rose here. So I'm just gonna go ahead and just sweep it up and dab it off on my paper towel. All right, let's go ahead and add some leaves. So I'm still using my number four. I'm gonna turn my paper just a little bit so I can get a good angle for um, these leaves here. And I will do a couple they're just little like little C curves. And I'm gonna leave a little bit of white right in the middle. It just acts as a highlight. And you're gonna to wanna to leave a little bit of that because like what I said before, it's easier to um, just keep adding and just work lighter. And then you could just add more and more if you see you need more because with watercolor, you can't really take away. You will never get the white of that paper back. You can lighten it up, but you will never get the white of the paper back. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and add a couple more little leaves, just really generic leaves. They're like little teardrops. It's like a little oval with some points. Make sure you got that little point at the end there. All right. And I like variation in my colors here. This one's got a little bit more of the sap green. This one's a little bit more of the um, Windsor green blue. And if you feel like you need to close up that highlight a little bit, definitely go for it. I'm gonna add another leaf going this way. Like that, all right, really pretty. I'm gonna go ahead and add my stem. So I'm just gonna go and just connect it with a nice little stem, nice and delicate. I think I wanna add a few more uh, leaves though. So I'll take a little bit more of my sap green And you can add as many leaves as you want. I think I'm just gonna do just a few right here because I've got my, um, my bud on the other side and I don't wanna take away from that composition here. So I really wanna leave my bud just like that. Now, another thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a little bit of orange to my, um, to my greens and what that's gonna do is it's just going to um, take away from the value a little bit, the hue. It's going to make it a little bit more muddy, a little bit more brown. It won't be as vibrant. 
um, because reds and greens and oranges, they're all, they're complementary colors. So, um, I mean, I could use a real red red there, but since I'm using the orange, kind of the red pal cad right here in the middle, I'm gonna use the same thing on the leaf, just so I don't have too many colors going on at the same time. I'm just kind of pulling in this color down here a little bit. It's nice when you use the same colors a little bit all over your painting. It just kind of pulls your painting in together. And I'm gonna do the same thing over here too. Just like that, put a little bit in my leaf. And then I might even just put a little bit up here too. It just kind of takes away a little bit of that vibrancy of the green. If you wanna mute it down a little bit, just add any color you use. Even if you were using purple, add a little yellow to it because it's the complementary color. If you were using um, blue, add a little bit of orange to it because it's the complementary color. So your complementary colors will just tone down your value a little bit. Okay, I'm gonna take away a little bit. It's still wet here, so I can do it. I'm gonna take away a little bit of that green on this bud here. I'm just gonna swipe up with a clean brush, wipe it off on my paper towel, okay? And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add um, I'm gonna add the little bit of that yellow and orange right in here also, but I'm gonna let this dry a little bit because I don't want it to mix all together. I'm gonna go ahead and work on my rose a little bit more. So I'm gonna pull in a little bit of that orangey color one more time. And I'm just gonna go in a little bit again with num my number four, and I'm just gonna add a couple more little spirals, broken up spirals. I'm gonna take my bigger brush, my number eight, and I'm gonna blend those together. So it's pretty much doing what we did before, but it's just adding another layer on top of it. You're just deepening up your colors. And I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna add a little bit more of my yellow in here too. And this is just my cad yellow with a little water. And just kind of hit it where you think you want a little bit of punch of yellow. And then you can push and pull your line, make some of them thicker, some of, some of them thinner, just have a little variation in there and you will see, um, you'll see what a great outcome it is if you just have a little bit of push and pull. See how here I did a little bit thicker and then I lifted up my line a little bit and I went a little thinner here. So see that the thickness here and the thinness there, it just brings a little variety to your painting and makes it a little bit more interesting. Um, and not everything has to be the same, um, same uh, line weight. And then you still want to leave a little bit of white in here. See how I've got a little bit of white still in there? You want to leave that. Now, if I did a little bit too dark on my outside, because I wanted the outside petals to be a little bit um, lighter, go ahead and just lift it up with your, a clean brush and dab it off on your paper towel. Or you could always make your flower a little bit bigger by just adding some water to it and it'll dilute the paint a little bit more. And I'll actually just show you. So what I did there was I just picked it up with a clean brush. But if you wanted to, what you could do is work it out a little bit and just put like an extra little layer of a um, petal here and it will automatically lighten it up because I'm just using water and I'm pulling the paint that I already have on my paper. I'm pulling it out. That's all I'm doing. I did not add more paint. So that will also lighten up the edges of your rose as well. All right, I think it's looking pretty good, but I do want to deepen up my, um, my stems and my leaves a little bit. But before I do that, I'm gonna go ahead and add that little bud. So I'm gonna add some of my yellow right there. And then I think I'm gonna pick up a little bit of that orange also. Maybe just dab the orange more towards the top here and let it bleed down. Now you can have your leaves, your little point here coming down pretty much as much as you want. I lost a little bit of my yellow. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna Pick it up with a clean brush, dab it off. Pick it up with a clean brush, dab it off. What happened there was my orange and my green started making a brown and um, a kind of like the look that we were going for up here, but I did not want it down here. I actually wanted just my yellows and my oranges, but I was actually activating that green paint again. I wasn't that careful. So I'm gonna go ahead and do it again. And I'm gonna add just a little bit of my yellow right here. Now my green is probably still wet, so I will have to probably rework that in a little bit. All right, so I wanna go ahead and deepen up my orange one more time. 
right in the center here. And it is still a little wet, so it is bleeding on its own, which is beautiful. It's just fo following all the little veins that I made, all those little lines I made, it's just following along. And I actually want to push it out a little bit further and just hit the yellow in certain areas and kind of bring a little bit of that orange out as well, just here and there, not a lot. And as you can still see, I have a lot of white space still showing through. Now, if you feel that this is too vibrant, which I'm gonna leave it because I love it, but you could just pick it back up with a paper towel or you could, um, you could just pick it up with your paintbrush and dab it off on your paper towel that way. I'm gonna add a little bit more green to my leaves and my stem. And I'm just going between my two greens that I was using. I'm gonna just darken it up right under the flower right there. And I think maybe even more towards the middle of my, my, um, my leaves here, more towards where the leaves hit the stem. I'm just gonna darken that up a little bit. Beautiful. All right, graded it out a little bit. If you think it's too uh, stark of a line, just graded it out a little bit by just putting a little water on it. If you think that your highlights on your leaves are a little too, um, too bright, too white, just go ahead and tone it down a little bit with a little bit of a lighter green. And I think I am going to wait for this to dry and I'm gonna put my green right back in my bud. All right, so I think my bud is dry. So I'm gonna pick up my size two and I'm gonna pick up a little bit of that sap green again. And I'm just gonna go over where I had done those C curves at the beginning and that little line in the middle because I had lost a little of that when I started adding the yellow to it. My green was not dry enough and everything started blending together. And actually, I'm gonna bring one of my greens down a little bit more. There. I want some yellow showing, but not that much. So there, I closed up that gap a little bit. And you can play around with that. If you think that you added just too much of the, the flower showing here, um, just go ahead, let it dry, and add more green around it. It's no big deal. And I think I'm just going to hit here just once more with my sap green right under the flower. Just to deepen it a little bit again. And I think I'm going to add a little bit of my blue in here as well. just to deepen it up right in the middle where all those leaves are touching. Look how pretty that is. And I think I'll do the same up here, just add a little bit of my blue right under the, right under the rose. And you can bring some of that down too. It'll just kind of create a shadow. Now, one thing when you create shadows, you always want to think of a light source. So if you put your shadows on the left side, you pretty much want to continue that throughout your painting. Um, unless your light source is coming from many different directions. And I think I'm just gonna do a little bit going down my stem on the left side as well with the blue. And then maybe on the left side of this little stem. And I just have a very delicate light touch. I'm barely hitting my paper. And I think I'm gonna do the same thing on my bud. Add a little bit of blue up here. Wow, that really turned out cute. Now, you can keep playing around this with this for a long time, um, and sometimes I do. I just don't know when to stop painting. But I could go ahead and add a little bit more yellow, make it a little bit more vibrant. I could always come in with maybe a darker red or even a Payne's gray or a little bit of blue just to deepen up that middle there. Um, so you could just keep playing around with this all day until you get the look you like. But that was just a really quick little um, video that I wanted to do for you just to show you how to paint a yellow rose. Okay, so one thing that I, I did forget to show you, um, so I'm just gonna add it right here at the end of the video really quick, um, is I forgot to do roses have little thorns. So I'm gonna take a little bit of my sap green and I'm gonna take a little bit of my yellow ochre and I made two little puddles for them here and I'm taking my size two and I'm gonna kind of mix a little bit of my sap green into my yellow ochre just to kind of get this 
brownish, brownish green going right there. And you're just gonna wanna come in and just very gently put in little, um, little thorns here and there. And I'm adding some a little bit more green, some a little bit more, um, some a little bit more with the yellow ochre. And you're just gonna wanna go down that stem on both sides. And it's just gonna add a little bit extra interest and detail to your painting. If you want to do, I think it's part of the stems of um, of the buds and the leaves have it also. So if you want to add just a few here and there to where the leaves are and the little bud is, you could do that. So see how it just added a little bit of extra interest here? You can make them a little darker, you can make them a little lighter. Um, I just used, like I said, sap green and yellow ochre, ochre, but you could do even more of a darker brown. Just depends on how you want your look to be. And then I think I'm gonna add a little bit more yellow ochre right into these leaves up here, just a little bit more. And I think I'm gonna add a little bit here to these leaves as well. So like I was saying before, where I added the orange in here to the rose, so then I added a little bit of that orange in the leaves as well. Um, I, it's nice that I added the yellow ochre here, so I'm pulling it into the leaves as well. So it's, it's nice when you have a little bit of the same colors, a little bit just um, flowing around your painting. There. Now I'm gonna call her done. There you go. Thanks so much for watching the video. I hope you liked it and learned a little something. And if you did like it, please give me a thumbs up and you can make a comment in the comment section. And don't forget to subscribe if you want more videos like this one. And you can also follow me on Facebook and Instagram. Have a great day. Bye.